and we're good to go. Today I want to discuss with you the stock market crash, something that a lot of people kind of talk about these days recently. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about on, on this topic. More specifically, I had a chat yesterday with Scott Phillips, a good friend of mine here in Bangkok, also, also a trader who I'm, I interviewed before. A link for that is in the description of the video if you want to check out the interview, it's pretty good. It was like a while back, but we discussed this today about things about the market in general. And what I want to show you today in this video is something about the stock market crash. And most specifically, people talk these days about the crash in 2021, which is going to happen supposedly. That's what people talk about. Uh, by the way, you guys come to the chat and let me know hearing this fine. Everything is good. I want to make sure everything is, is perfect. So, yeah, people talk about the crash everywhere, right? Awesome. Bob, welcome. Uh, this is from the sounding of from here from, uh, in Michigan. Perfect. Welcome, Bob. Cool. So, people talk about the crash and the upcoming crash that could happen next year. They talk about oh, the fact that the economy went bad because of the, the COVID 19 virus. And that's all good, right? But when I look at things, like th these reasons, they've been there since like, since like probably like five or six years. I remember 2015, people talk about the fact that they were going out of the market, keeping their, their investment in cash because they were afraid of a possible crash the coming year. So people said that for like the, the past, like, I don't know, like 15 something or like five years something that there will be a crash coming, right? And so what I want to do here is I want to go back and I, I want to look at the charts because for me, charts mean something, not just the, the economy or things that people might talk about, but the actual real chart, right? So. What I had, uh, and yesterday I had a chat with, uh, with uh, Scott Phillips, like I said, and what Scott kind of taught me is the fact that there's a really, really big potential to see a market crash with the RTI, with the ATR, the average true range. So I'm not sure if you guys use the ATR or not in trading, maybe you never used it before, that's totally fine. But what the ATR does is it's kind of showing us different things about the market. And so what I want to do is I want to show you, first of all, the past crash, the crash we had before that in 2008 or so. And you'll see quickly the commodities. Okay, so I have here the ATR at the bottom of my chart, right over here. And this is the um, SPYs, the S&P 500 index, okay, the DETF. So let's go back to 2008. Okay. Now you'll notice something pretty clear here. Okay, In this period, and I'm just going to draw here on the chart quickly. In this period right here, Right, uh, that's not as I expect. Uh, this point right here, right, we're going up, right? That's a bull market, a pretty strong bull market. All right, notice what the ATR is doing, right? It's pretty low here. Um, well, I, I like the lowest here in this period, it's 2005 and going forward, right? We're really low here on the ATR, crazy low. Now, what you notice is what happens when we get to this point, right? Is that the ATR starts to increase. So what that means in simple terms, because the ATR measures the range of the market or like how, how much the, the, the price moves on average for the last 14 days here. So we see that here we are increasing the ATR. So meaning that the range that price moves is, is bigger. Right? And that's one of the, big, the biggest commonalities of crashes and big drops in the market is that the ATR is rising. Okay, And, and that's something that, that I observed myself before, like I said. Uh, Scott Phillips told me that yesterday and he kind of showed me how that, that worked out before. I'm just sharing here with you because I want to share that because it's important, first of all, and you can benefit from it quite a bit. Okay, So when we have a big crash in the market, usually the ATR is rising. And then we get to a peak. Um, so then we get to a peak and then usually the market after that kind of, uh, the, the ATR drops, right? Because that's a peak and the market recovers right after. Now that's the basic. This is 2008 and 2000 and before five and, and so on. I think we get to that point. Well, this is this is important. This this big rise here in the ATR or the average true range. So like it could be also the volatility. Uh, we could look at, even at the VIX, right? The uh, volatility index would we'll say the same thing. When you have this rise, it usually means that the market's going to drop quite a bit. Okay. Now let's take a look at. What if we look at this for the future, right? This was one time. Uh, so this was one time, but maybe there could be more that we can look at in this market. So this is about after 2008, 2010. Um, and, and then here's where we get our kind of choppy market. See how every time we have a rise, the volatility is at, it, at its lowest here, right? And then that's when the market moves up. 
Now when the market kind of crashes a little bit or we can see more retraces here, that's when we have a rise in the ATR. Okay, now this is a big one compared to this one here. There we had a much bigger kind of downfall, a much bigger crash than here. But it's still the same principle, right? You can see it still applies. Now let's have a look at a little bit more, right? So price goes up. This is now we get to 2012 and 13. This is where we had our big, big, big up move, right? Our big uptrend uh, that we have almost until now, until 2017 or so, or 18. You see how, again, right? We have this huge big move and the ATR is pretty low, right? Now, not as low as it's been before, but it's still pretty quite, it's quite low, right? It makes sense. And now look at how, when it's starting to rise, right? We start to have some, can move this over here. We start to have some problems in the market, right? The price starts to get more choppy and, and sideways, right when the ATR goes uh, to rise. Interesting, right? Uh, let me know in the chat if that makes sense to you or if you find it's this interesting or not. If it's not interesting, that's fine, but I think it's pretty interesting, pretty, pretty scary. I hope my image is not hiding this too. Let me just move forward here. Okay, so this is what we have over here. Right, we have a rise in the ATR, a more choppy market right there. And then we get to, again, right, another up move with the ATR dropping again. So we are really low in volatility there, really low in range. Because uh, it's like just small candlestick basically moving upward and upward and nothing else. Now look, this is now we get closer to now, right? 2018. See how the ATR rises and we get this choppiness here in the market. Really, really choppy, right? But the ATR uh, reach a compared to here before we had, like uh, this is 2008, right? This is pretty much the all time high. We are at the same level now, or, or that's in actually 2000 and, uh, 2019 or 18, end of 18, right? We get to the same point as, as the crisis before, but it doesn't mean we're gonna drop, right? It's just a rise, that's okay. Now look at this right it's a rise and then we get to here diminishing again uh, i'm just gonna move forward for you guys it's gonna be easier to see oh, oh let me just go back awesome so let's just try to get some more space the camera may, might be hiding these these parts cool so see here we have this small uptrend right this decrease in atr and then we get this big spike when we have this big downfall here in 2020 because the, of course the covid 19 virus and everything around and then here volatility decreases a little bit the atr decreases a little bit but we are still really high right which is if you compare it to before what he had in 2008 and even the other years before that it indicates that there might be a crash coming because the ATR is still high, it's still rising. Right now it's more stable, but look at this big move. And now we're just here, we might rise more again in the future. So what I recommend is pay attention to how the ATR rises. And this just works for like, yeah, for the, the index, right? The S&P or whatever that is, or index, you can look at them if you want. But it also works on different currency pairs, right? We can look at that after if you want. Uh, I don't really plan about looking at currency pairs, but we could apply the same principle we talk about here to currency pairs and to how currency pairs behave. And you'll see that when the ATR rises, there might be a drop coming, okay? So that's just an example. Now let's have a look at uh, the years before, right? So what about 2000 and uh, the 2000 crisis, right? And the back then the ATR was still lower, quite a bit lower, but you will notice that Oh, sorry about that. You will notice that price, uh, so this is around here. Right, so the ATR was really low back when we were going upward, then it started to rise and rise more. And that's where we have to crash, right? In these coming years. And then we go down after again for what I discussed here on the video. So I hope that makes sense. Again, this is something that you want to pay attention to because the fact that most people that talk about the crisis these days, just don't talk about the the ATR or technicals. Talk all about the economy and things, and that's all good, right? But it's not something that will necessarily um, produce the, the best prediction of when things will fall and what will happen. Because you could think about this, and you could like, yeah, you could definitely be kind of playing around with this and and waiting for the crash. But then people have said this for the past five years or so, so I don't see anything changing that much with with that. Okay, so that makes sense for you guys and 
I know that's not the best time here to be able to stream to people that are watching my channel in the US for sure. Um, you guys are pretty late. But despite that, I'll make sure to answer your questions, hear your question after you watch the replay. If you're watching later, that's totally fine. And I'll be happy to, to help you out, of course. <laughs> so I suggest you pay attention to this first. That's something you want to be kind of careful about. You want to notice the ATR. Um, you could read about this more. I found a good article here before that uh, I kind of want to share with you guys if you want to read about it. It's, I think, a little bit old. Uh, it talks about the ATR and kind of what happens in the big crashes and everything around. So you can you can probably find it out somewhere. Uh, just type in price spikes in the average true range. Uh, check out the interview link below with Scott Phillips. I recommend it's a really good trader. Talked with him a lot yesterday. We spent a few hours looking at, at trades and everything around. That, that was pretty cool. And so that's it, guys. I appreciate your time. And I'll catch you back here for the next video pretty soon. Ciao.